Hey, my legion. I all doing today. I'm with my buddy John. We're here to review Free Guy. How much? Yeah, uh, but he said it was free, so he must be free. Are you free? I'm free. It's a uh, Ryan Reynolds movie, directed by Sean Levy. Not that one. Yeah. The guy, he's from uh, Stranger Things, which also stars Steve from Stranger Things in this. Also, uh, let's see if I guess. Taika Waititi. Yeah. And a few other people. <laughs> awesome. I mean, it was really cool. I mean, it like. I mean, it reminds me, I mean, because, I mean, I don't know who, who all heard of it. Back in the 90s, ABC had a show on Saturday mornings, computer animated show called Reboot in, the, like, the mid-90s. Uh, like, 9 o'clock in Saturday, oh, Saturday night. Saturday morning. Oh, it, I mean, it was such a good movie. It was such <laughs> a good show. I mean, I would get up uh, to watch it. I think it was 95 or something like that. And uh, it was like... Someone like this, I mean, it's like a character inside a video game. You know, that's what... Oh, yeah, let's explain the movie. Yeah, free guy, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, let me do that. Place, yeah. a non-playable character yeah. in a video game that suddenly uh, is able to control what they do in the game. Yeah. That's what I'm, I mean, but Reboot was like, they lived inside this society, and like inside an Atari game, bo bo game box. Right. And it's the incoming game, and then they'd have to play the game or something like that. Yeah, they said this is kind of influenced for my sci fi novel from 1960. Oh, cool. Yeah, uh, so it, it's a lot of fun, you know, where he's trying to learn, like, uh, he doesn't realize at first uh, what he is. He thinks he's a real person because everybody in the game thinks, but they have set routines because in video games, uh, you know, you write. What's called scripts for character, for the non-player characters, and they follow saying certain things and doing certain things. And uh, the better script them, the better the interactive they can be. So if they have something really well written, they can actually almost kind of think on their own. But uh, yeah. so it's kind of interesting to see if you're like into video games. They have all these little things in there, and some of the stuff I miss. But there's like. When you, sometimes you have a lose control of your character in an online game because yeah. so of the connection kind of slowing down the, the connection speed to the game, and you see it like running into a wall. They throw a little bit of that into a background yeah. scene, and there's all kinds of little things like that. So it's kind of clever. If you're into video games, you may appreciate it more than other people. Yeah, yeah. It was really. I mean, I liked it. I mean, a lot of funny stuff in it. Like, uh, Taiki with TD, I mean, I think that's how you He really has good comic timing and stuff like that, oh. you know. And uh, I wonder if he would, did ad-libbing and stuff like that for some of his things, or yeah. if possible. Of course, you wonder if he's stuck a director while I was ad-libbing, too. Because some, some people are real strict about that, you know, where you're not allowed to ad-lib anything. No. Which I don't understand, you know, because... Yeah, you want to you want to shoot what was written, but you also want to give the actors the opportunity to come up with something new because he might come up with something yep. better. So I don't like the idea of oh you, you could only do what's written. Mm. For example, one of the best is Blade Runner, yep. where what they had written for Rucker Hauer in his last scene. Mm. Uh, I don't even remember what he wrote, but. Uh, he came to uh, Ridley Scott and the producer and said, "Hey, I read, I wrote something for him to say. Said what was there, and they're thinking, oh, great, the actor came up with something. Yeah, and what he wrote was so brilliant and beautiful and perfect for his character that they ended up using what he wrote. Yeah. So, you know, you don't want to just stick to the script. You want to be able to improvise and ad lib and all that stuff." You know, yeah, shoot what's written, yeah. but then let the people, yeah, it might come up with something that's even better. You never know. It's like, yeah, you, know, you watch these YouTube videos where uh, it's like some of these like famous uh, quotes and movies, a lot of them were just ad-libbed. Yep. So, yeah, and, and I'm making the movie better than what was written. Yeah. So, yeah, you never know with him. He might ad-lib stuff and he might yeah. allow... The performers ad lib and come up with something better. That's cool. I mean, when you mentioned a famous example, another super famous example, the most famous scene in Taxi Driver was when he was uh, 
was improvised by Robert De Niro when he goes, "Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me?" Yeah, that, I'm the only one here. That that was completely improvised by him. That's probably one of the most core things in any iconic. movie, you know? Yeah. Yeah, iconic. That was scenes, pretty cool. Lines. Yeah. 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 Um, I, yeah. Who knows? But uh, maybe. <laughs> I really liked the movie. I mean, I I mean, it's one of the ones. And, and then we throw in. Uh, yeah. Ryan Reynolds too. There's yeah, gonna be Ryan a lot Reynolds. Of bad Oh, yeah, Ryan Reynolds, I mean, it's like, they should do it, I mean, would you go to Ryan Reynolds, you know, I should expect, just like with Kevin Hart, it's like, it's a Ryan reynolds movie, just like Kevin Hart would be the Kevin Hartiest movie, or something like that, they should do like, uh, movies with them, but playing against type, with the, them two in a movie, but playing different roles than they usually right. do, you know, but no, it was a lot of fun, I give it an 8 out of 10, oh, it's yeah. definitely really good. And Jason didn't like the trailer when he first saw it. Yeah, I didn't like the trailer when I first saw it. <laughs> well, just like, I mean... Uh, per, like, I, 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 the first one, too, I thought, eh. Uh, yeah. Then when the second one came out and watched yeah, it. Yeah, it looked really yeah, cool. Yeah, this might look... This, when showed a little bit more, it looked more interesting. Well, I, th I thought the same way when I saw uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet, record, the second record Ralph movie. And, I mean, I still wanted to see it because I saw the first one. I liked the first one. And the second one was really brilliant. But, I mean, this, right. the trailer didn't make it look like it was very limited and stuff like that. No, the movie's... I, I think you'd really like it. I mean, some of those right. are really good. But, I mean, uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with Free Guy. It was pretty cool. But then, on the other end, you get something like the Moon Knight trailer, which probably yeah. gives a lot of weight, but yeah. you don't know what the heck's going oh, on. Oh, yeah. But it, you really want to watch it, because it's yeah. like, man, this looks pretty wild. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, so, wild it's a good street. example of how to do a trailer where... You might be giving away a lot, but you don't know what's being given away because yeah. it's all out of context. Yep. Sort of like Cold in July, yeah. that movie with the guy who played Dexter that I showed you before, and Don Johnson, where what they show in the trailer, yeah, they're showing a bunch of stuff, but you don't it, know what it's kind of yeah. different when you watch the movie yeah. because it crosses genres. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. I love it. So those are like two examples of how to do trailers yeah. properly. Yeah. So. But the problem is, I think I mentioned maybe in another video, I can't remember who it was, if it was Ridley Scott or somebody else that said the reason why they give away so much is because general audiences want to know what they're getting. Yeah, because my dad is, I mean, my dad was like, he would like they so or he says so too much to comprehend or something like that. I tried to, I, because he watched The Matrix and I, I tried to explain The Matrix with him. He thought, oh, I'm sorry, I asked, Jesus Christ. But no, it was it wasn't that complicated. But I mean, right. he's like that's too much to comprehend. I'm like, okay, but I don't even think he saw the first one. I mean, I saw the first one myself in the theater, and he might have seen something else. And then uh, we rented. We both saw. Well, I bought the DVDs for the second two, and I bought the Animatrix, which was great. Well, if you didn't see the first one, I don't think the second, third would make any sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, I tried to explain what it was. I mean, you know, my uncle, Uncle Wayne, was still alive back then. He said he didn't understand what was going on in the movies. He just like the action, so that's fine too. All right. It does get complicated after a while, though. I mean, but you know, that's what commentaries are for and stuff, so. Yep. Um, I hope you like this video, buddy. Me and my buddy John, until next time, please. Okay. Take care of my legion. <laughs> awesome.